Welcome back, freshwater fishing novices. My name is Moles. My name is Moles. This is Freshwater Fishing Novice Friday. And this is the Freshwater Fishing Novice YouTube channel. Thanks for coming back. What are we talking about this week? What is fishing tackle? First, let's look at a comment that I got from a subscriber right up here from Tom Sisson. What's up, Tom? How you doing? Thanks for leaving me a comment, man. You gave me a lot of input and a lot of stuff to work with, and that's why we're talking about your comment right now. Tom Sisson says, Hey, FFN, I'm enjoying your channel. It's just like hanging out with a buddy and talking about fishing. Tom said you could also do like some fireside chat videos where like me and a friend take questions and talk. Tom thinks people would eat that up. And then he says, easy listening, my friend. Tom, thanks for that. Uh, those very kind words, man. Uh, that means a lot. I have been thinking about doing a fireside chat. Probably with uh, maybe my buddy C-Tone because him and I are about the same level. I want to say the same level, but that guy keeps catching bigger fish than me. We started at the same time. That's what I'll say. Me and my buddy Carlton, we started fishing at the same time as adults, unbeknownst to each other. And just luckily enough, when I moved back to the area, we reconnected and uh, we've been fishing ever since. Maybe I can talk Carlton into doing that. Now, let's get to your meat and potatoes of the question of what Tom wanted to talk about. So Tom says he's just been getting into fishing as an adult. Said he's probably overthinking everything. He said as a kid he used to go out all the time and just go fish, no big deal. Now as an adult he's overanalyzing everything. Hook sizes, jig weights, etc. Just all the gear is overwhelming now. Because he's not just... Uh, it's a hook. Zing! Because, you know, little kids just throw whatever. They don't know. What, do they really know what they're doing? Some little kids do. But I'd say the vast majority of us as children had no idea what we were doing when we were fishing. Tom said he'd like to see a video on hooks. Really like to see a video on hooks or like basic tackle. He wanted to know about the tackle for maybe like panfish through bass. He also wanted to know what's in my tackle box. Eww, ooh, a lot. Uh, that might be a separate video, Tom. He said he, thought, he thinks I touched on some of this other stuff in other videos. I have. But he's like, he said he'd like to see it all in one video. He said, but it would be cool to have like one video or maybe like an overall gear guide for your first time going out. And then Tom finished up by saying, keep up the good work. Thanks, Tom. There's like a couple different questions in here. All right, everyone, let's take a look and see what Tom's bullet points or questions are let's look at the first one right here say so you'd love to see a video on hooks or like basic tackle say for like pan through bass pan fish through bass is what he's asking about right there okay hooks is we're, we're going to talk about hooks today let's talk about tackle what is tackle all right let's get tom's comment out of there and now we're going to pop up an answer from wikipedia what is tackle Fishing tackle is the equipment used by anglers when fishing. Well, that seems kind of vague. Thanks, Wikipedia. It also says almost any equipment or gear used for fishing can be called fishing tackle. Wikipedia. Now, what do I consider tackle? Well, Tom, what I consider tackle, I guess would be really considered terminal tackle. Put Tom's comment back up there. And so anyway, what I consider tackle, Tom, and everyone else would be terminal tackle. Now, terminal tackle, terminal tackle is hooks. This video is gonna be about hooks. Let's look at uh, Tom's second question before we get into hooks. What's in my tackle box? My terminal tackle box, a bunch of hooks, weights, snap swivels, any kind of beads, plastic beads or anything. Bobbers, bobbers would be te terminal tackle, I believe. What else would be terminal tackle? Is that it? I'm probably, I'm. Guarantee I'm missing something. Off the top of my head, what I, I would consider terminal tackle. Now Tom's third question, he'd like to see an overall gear guide for someone's first time out. So, I think that's doable. I'll probably save that for a whole video. I kinda like breaking down each individual thing, but if you wanna see an overall gear guide, generally what I would send, if I was taking someone out fishing, what I would set them up with, like say I just grab stuff from my garage, out of my quiver, fish, do anglers call it quivers? And I grabbed, you know, a rod for me, a rod for him, and then a bunch of 
terminal tackle and lures and stuff like that, I can make a video about that. All right, so let's get into terminal tackle and how the dirty specifics of terminal tackle and different types of hooks and what the heck they're used for. All right, freshwater fishing novices, let's take a look at the bait holder hook. So, amazing. Can't believe I went to art school. Bait holder hook. So right up here, we got the eye. You can see the point, the barb, the bend, where the shank is, and the gap between here and the point. When you're looking at a bait holder hook, what you're looking for is these two little spikes here on the back side. They're gonna vary in size, which we're gonna talk about hook size later. But these hooks right here indicate that it's a bait holder hook if you're looking at it. Now, really small ones, you're gonna to have to look really, really close at the shank to see those little spikes. What's a bait holder hook good for? Lively, live bait. So if you get something that wriggles a lot, when it gets on those hooks, it's not going anywhere. It's just gonna hang out and get stuck on there. When do I use a bait holder hook? Typically, I use really small bait holder hooks. Keep in mind, a size 10 bait holder hook is what I will fish uh, a wacky rig little trout worm for panfish. That hook is teeny. Again, we're just kind of running through the different types of hooks here. All right, so the next type of hook we're gonna talk about is gonna be called the worm hook. So the worm hook, you can see what you're looking at. Let me show you in, in my hand too. So you can see, I'm trying to show you right there guys, is that long, straight, shank and you can see it's almost like a u right there so that is a worm hook what we're going to use this for is if you're using like a soft plastic worm like a stick bait so with a worm hook what we're going to do ooh, this thing's gross we're going to go right in the head and where it starts to bend so we're going to like right here right where it starts to bend we're going to pull it out through the head of that, come down, thread it back up onto the eye, put that in the front, so you can see how that sits right there. And then you're gonna go differences between this and a wide gap hook, you're gonna go through at an angle. And then you expose that so you can see how that's how the worm hook works out the worm hook and you're gonna use this hook for like bass and we'll go over the sizes and stuff that you should be looking at that's a worm hook so the next hook is gonna be the circle hook important points to check out on the circle hook is that tip So you guys can see that how severe that hook is so it's very rounded right here the bend is very severe it's very wide so what you're going to use this for would be not this big just much smaller ones let's see if i got one right here so i got a smaller one right here i'd use for a wacky rig you can see how big that is compared to my hand so I would wacky rig a Senko. So now I got my worm, hold it in the center. So equal parts are hanging down. What I do is I take that hook, go straight through the body of it. And that's how I wacky rig a Senko or a stick bait. So it's got that action falling through the water. Why would you use a circle hook when you could use a worm hook? So a circle hook's good because the way this is, <coughs> this bend and this point go, when the fish sucks it in and you just have to reel up, you don't have to set the hook. With a worm hook, you gotta really jam into it. With a circle hook, you just kinda reel up and pull your rod back. You just kinda right up to 12 o'clock as you're reeling. So you reel in and then you just keep reeling up and pull your rod back. And what this hook is gonna do so if it's in its mouth, the fish's mouth, it's going to pull it out. But when this hit, this 
little tip of the circle hook hits that corner of the fish's mouth, it's going to penetrate. And you're going to almost always get a hook set on the side of the mouth as opposed to gut hooking it. So there's certain hooks that get too deep, they're too long or whatever. With a worm hook, sometimes that can happen if you're not quick and on, your, on the bite. So a circle hook's good for beginners, so you are really hooking them in the mouth. The problem is it's not weedless, but they do make weedless ones. So that's the circle hook. Next hook is the extra wide gap hook, or EWG. So this hook kind of looks like the worm hook, but you can see it bends out more, almost like the circle hook, right? So what this does is it gives it more, you're gonna rig it, well, let's talk about how you rig it. So you got your worm again, you got your extra wide gap hook. What you're gonna go do is go through the nose, or the head of it, head of the worm, right to the bend, right to that point right there. And then you're gonna come back through the soft plastic yeah, thread it up over the eye just so this part is totally filled up with the worm so you can't see the eye up here because it's hidden in here some fishing lines coming through so you can see the bottom of that hook what I'm gonna do is pinch it right there I'm gonna come just where I marked it with my fingers straight through you can see that I don't know if you can see that next to it if I'm in the way and then what you do is you tech expose it again. So that is Texas rig without the, that's weightless Texas rig. Why would I use this over the worm hook? When a fish bites it and bites down on this worm, say they come up and bite down, boop, it pops through. It's got a lot more space to hook that fish. The worm hook has a lot less of that gap. That's the EWG, the extra wide gap hook. What you're looking for is that extra bend right here. And it's a smooth shank. There's no hooks on the other side of it. You just got that point right there and you basically line it straight up like that. And you can see that's how the EWG sets up when you do a Texas rig. All right, the octopus hook. So what's the deal with the octopus hook? Octopus hook is short shank hook, kind of like the circle hook, but it's gonna be a less dramatic circle. The circle hook kind of bends back more dramatically than that. When are you gonna use this octopus hook? as opposed to like the circle hook. You're gonna use the octopus hook when you need to use more of like a subtle presentation. Um, yeah, if you need to be more subtle, instead of the circle hook, use the octopus hook. I mean, you use live bait on this guy too. So, leeches or something like that, if you needed a more subtle presentation, the octopus hook is a little less aggressive than the, the circle hook. But it does the same thing, it hooks the fish in the side of the mouth. So the Aberdeen hook, this is uh, probably one of the most common hooks you'll see in the bait shop, mainly because you use them for like panfish and brim and small, small fish, crappie and stuff like that. Usually they're smaller sizes too. This gap right here between the point and the shaft, it's a little bit wider. You can put, they're good for threading like a minnow, if you want to fish a minnow in the water or if you're doing some pan fishing. The Aberdeen hook's good, but I prefer to use like a really small bait uh, holder hook. I also use those forceps to get those little hooks off. So this might, this Aberdeen hook, if you're not using forceps, is probably easier to get out of a panfish's mouth. So take that into account when you go out. All right, freshwater fishing novices, I'm probably going to butcher the, how you say this, but uh, kale hook? Kahale? Kaley? Anyway, this dumb hook, it's, this hook is somewhere between a J hook and a circle hook. Now, why would you use this? Well, like the circle hook, this is gonna be for live bait. Um, but this is a much, per, much more pronounced and the hook goes back at the eye, as opposed to the circle hook, which just kind of makes a circle. I've never used one of these hooks because I just use a circle hook or a bait holder hook. And I feel like that's good enough. Do you need? The kahale, kahale, kale, that's not how you say kale, hook, I don't think so, but at least you know what the heck it is now. All right, so 
What the heck is this hook? Seawash? Siwish? I'm wicked good at pronunciation. What's the deal with this hook? And how is it different from like a J hook or any other hook? Well, the eye hole is going to be facing this way as opposed to being turned that way on a hook. If you want to replace like say treble hooks because you have a, a limit on the hook points that you can have on a lure, you can change out your treble hooks for a sea wash hook. But that's generally, I guess, what you're going to use them for. I've personally never used them because I just go with the treble hook, which we're going to go look at right now. Last but not least, the treble hook. And I mean, there's more hooks than I'm going through right now, but this is the last one I'm going to touch on because I feel like this video is already going long. The treble hook. Now, where's the treble hook? Typically, a treble hook's already going to be on a lure. Inline spinners. The treble hook's got three different points, three different points of contact to get in the fish's mouth. Uh, it's not like, se it's similar to setting a circle hook where you're just going to reel up. And I don't know what else to say about the treble hook. Watch out when you take them out of the fish's mouth because those things can end up in you pretty quick. And then you got more than one hook in you. So that's what the treble hook looks like. Right up here we got jigs. Most of the time, if you hear bass guys talking, bass fishermen, anglers, talking about jigs, they're going to be talking about these skirted jigs. So there's a few different types. I'm sure there's more than I'm listing right now, but I just grabbed a couple out of my tackle box. So the one on the left is going to be a ball head jig. The one just to the right of the ball head jig is going to be a football jig. And just to the right of that is going to be a swim jig. And then to the right of that is going to be a heavy cover slash flipping jig. What I want you guys to pay attention to is the width of the head. If you look at them, you see the ball head jig is kind of wide. The football head jig is mega wide. And the swim jig and the heavy cover flipping jig, they're pretty similar in width. And I've used a swim jig to flip into cover. So really what you're looking at when you're looking at a skirted jig like this is going to be one, the weight, two, the shape of the head, be able to determine what you're going to do with it. So with that heavy flipping, heavy cover flipping jig on the right, I could still use it as a swim jig and put like a uh, soft body on the back of that, like uh, swim jig or heavy cover you could use a soft body plastic paddle tail and work it on the back and you know swim it through the water column low high wherever you want to fish it depends on the weight of the jig really with a jig the heavier the weight the faster it's going to sink the deeper you're going to be able to fish it if it's lighter you're going to be fishing it higher up in the water column but for bass fishing for the big skirted jigs i just barely got into it like this year i mean i tossed a couple last year in really deep water so Let's talk about those jigs and what they're good for. So swim jig and the heavy cover flipping jig, obviously you're going to be able to swim one or swim both really because I just talked about that. Or you could flip it into like pads or grass or anything like that. But the trailer is an important thing. So on the back of like a flipping, if I'm going in a heavy cover, I'm going to be using more of a kind of like a creature dangly. I want some action as it's following through the water. So you're going to use like a craw tail or something like that, soft plastic, because it's just going to fall and you want those little kickers working. And when they get down there, the bass should just grab it with that jig. With a swim jig, you're going to want to put like a paddle tail on it or something like that because you're going to be swimming it. So you want there to be a secondary action as opposed to the skirt that's puffing up as you're swimming it. And you can, I mean, you can jig it off the bottom. That's what jigs are all about is getting down deep. So now with the ball head jig and the football head jig, what would I do with those? I would put a craw body on the back or like a creature bait, you know, with kickers. And what you're going to do, football head jig's great in rocks because it doesn't really get lodged in. So the football head jig is all wide. So it's just going to tonk. You can kind of drag it over things. The ball head jigs are similar. I use it similar, but on like smaller gear because it's a lighter little jig. I hope he. <laughs> I hope that helped out with uh, traditional bass jigs. Now let's look at some different jigs 
that are significantly smaller than these large skirted bass jigs. So what are some other type of smaller jigs? So I got like a little diagram over here. So let's take a closer look at that. We're gonna zoom in. So at the top, you can see I got a tube jig. Right underneath that, I have a, a swim bait jig head. I don't know what the heck's underneath that. It's kind of like a Ned rig, but it's rounded. And you can see where the eye is on each lure. It's gonna dictate how that lure sits with a tube jig, a Ned, and like a small ball head jig, or like for tur curly tail grubs, it's gonna be more of a, a hopping action. That swim bait's gonna be coming horizontally through the water column, so you're gonna be putting like a soft body paddle tail on there as well. These guys, you're gonna use more of, like the tube jig has its own little tube body. So I've already talked about those. Those are great for panfish. Swim bait, great for a lot of bass, it just depends on the size. So if you want smaller, if you want to catch smaller fish like panfish, you can go down to a smaller swim bait head. And Ned rigs are pretty teeny already, but you can catch huge fish on them. But the hooks are small enough that you can catch a small fish as well. Same with the ball head jig, those are pretty teeny. The tube and the ball head are probably the two smallest, like panfish, crappie, smaller fish, you're gonna use those guys. As you move up, you're gonna to go to a swim bait and a Ned and then if you want to go up further than that to bigger fish uh, and bigger gear, you're going to go to those traditional uh, skirted bass jigs. The side of these jigs and the side of those grass, those skirted bass jigs that I showed you a picture of, we also got this little guy. You can see his little tail's working, but this is called the Dark Sleeper. I'm not doing any endorsement of the company, but you can see it's got a hidden hook right there, but it's got all this weight right here. So when you fish this, it's deedly 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 dee down through the water column, and you're gonna do the same thing. You fish it the same way as a jig, and, but it's hyper-realistic and looks like a, a little goby. What's a goby? Not something I got where I am, but for some reason the fish love these guys. And if you wanna fish a jig that is pretty weedless, that dark sleeper is gonna be the one. What else were we gonna talk about? We talked about the different types of hooks. What the heck was the other thing I was gonna talk about? Hook sizes, that's what we were gonna talk about. So how, how do you know what size hook to get? The way hooks are sized is kinda of funky. So let's take a look at that. All right, so this very rudimentary drawn chart by yours truly, is supposed to make it very simple. What you're gonna hear is, you'll hear one aught, two aught, three aught, four aught. What the aught is that you're hearing is that slash and the zero. So you'll see one aught, two aught, three aught, four aught, five aught, and so on, it keeps going up. But that's gonna determine the size. Now the smallest size of an aught hook would be a one aught. Two aught is the next up, three aught going that way would get bigger. If you go in the other direction, say you see a size one, no aught. That's gonna be the biggest one going in this direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and keep going. Those hooks are gonna progressively get smaller. For fishing for panfish, that's a size 10 bait holder hook. So that is way over here and it's super small. I mean, small as my finger now, right? So if we look at it, we can see the smallest size is gonna be the higher number to the left of zero. The bigger the number, the smaller the hook. For the aughts, it's gonna go the other way. The smallest is gonna be one aught, and the biggest is gonna be, say, 10 aught. If you're looking at fishing hooks on the shelves, and you see one aught, that will be the smallest one in the aught section, going this way so you can go up. So if you're watching a video and someone says, oh, I'm using like a, a three aught, that's gonna dictate a larger hook. If they say a size three, it's gonna be big, but it's not gonna be even close to any of these guys. So these are the regular size hooks, one through 12 size, I would say are panfish to crappie to perch. 
stuff like that. And when you get to bigger fish, bass, smallmouth, all this stuff, you're gonna be in the aught section. So you can think about that when you go buy your gear. What am I fishing for? Am I fishing for panfish? I should be looking for like a size five or smaller for the hook. Am I going for bass? I'm gonna go, typically what I fish, one to five aught. Five aught's huge for me. I usually go three. That's the wire is gonna be thicker on these bigger hooks. So wire is gonna be thicker on the one as opposed to on a size 10 hook. Hope this chart kind of helped out guys. I know seeing a chart like this helped me a little bit so I figured I'd recreate that for you guys to see and just take in mentally. So when you're looking at hooks, you kind of have a better idea of what you're looking for. All right, freshwater fishing novices. I hope this video was helpful. Just kind of breaking down what the hooks are, what they do, what you can use them for. And hopefully the size, that size chart helped. I mean, when I found that thing, whew, that helped me a lot. Especially when I was in the, in the store trying to buy hooks and stuff like that. But now, hopefully when you're watching other YouTubers or other fishing content, you'll be able to understand a little bit better what size hooks they're talking about. You know, you know, six aught, big. Size 10, small. I want to thank you guys for watching this week. Current amount of subscribers I got right now, guys, 223. Hoping to get to uh, 250 by the end of the year. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Help my channel out, help it grow. Let someone else know who's trying to figure out what, what's tackle or what hooks do what. Go ahead and like and share this video with people that might be trying to learn how to learn a little bit more about hooks or tackle in general. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that, that like button. Let me know that you like this video. If you're like Tom or any one of my uh, other subscribers who have asked me questions, do you have questions? Leave them in the comments. Pretty likely to reply to your uh, comments. I try to reply to everyone's comments. If you actually leave me a bunch of information, I'm gonna, or a bunch of questions in your comments, I'm gonna reply to those. And I'm, Pretty good possibility I'll make a video of it. So if you have any comments, go ahead and leave those down below. If you have questions about anything, hooks, lures, bait, maybe not bait, rods, reels, lines, techniques, anything you guys have questions about, leave it in the comments. I wanna thank Tom, Sis, and Tom, thank you for uh, commenting and leaving me questions. It was uh, very helpful. I'm probably gonna end up making two or three videos out of your comment, so. Stay tuned and see which one I'm making next. If it's gonna be a general gear guide for first time people going out fishing, or if it's gonna be what's in my tackle box, you guys are gonna to have to stay tuned to find out. Thanks for watching the Freshwater Fishing Novice YouTube channel. My name is Moles. It's been Freshwater Fishing Novice Friday, and I'm the Freshwater Fishing Novice. Thanks for watching this week. Thanks for subscribing, liking, commenting, liking and sharing, and for commenting. Hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll catch you next week.